Blender for Noobs. Hello, this is Dan Nobles and welcome to Blender for Noobs. In this video, we're going to be looking at some of the new features that are available in Blender 2.7. So with Blender 2.7, we're seeing a lot of nice new features and add-ons. And what I'm going to do is just go by topics and see if I can cover at least the main things here. So I'm going to start with rendering, uh, and specifically cycles rendering. With cycles rendering, one of the main new features that we're seeing is volume rendering, volumetric rendering. Um, I have been waiting for this for a very long time. I'm very excited about it. Um, this is something that I've used in other software packages, and you can do some really cool things with it, such as uh, you know make smoke, fire, um, mist effects, use spotlights, and and use it to you know make a, like a highlight of your light. Just a lot of cool things. So if we look, I've set up a little scene here for just to kind of give you an idea what this is doing. Um, it's kind of weird looking at this like it is, but basically what I've done is I have this cone here, and if we go into the node editor, it's basically this, this cone I've made an emission node, and I'm plugging this directly into the volume. And when you do that, you're getting basically a light source that looks sort of like, um, well, it looks volumetric. It has sort of a mist to it. So one thing to keep in mind when you are rendering in volumes right now, doing the volume rendering, uh, if you go to your render tab, you can be in Cycles Render, but you must use the CPU in order to render. You can't use the GPU, the graphics processing unit, yet. Uh, the reason behind that is basically I believe that, you know, they have to work out the way to make this work with all the different graphic cards available out there and, you know, do some testing and make sure it doesn't crash Blender and all that good stuff. So a little bit slow in, in rendering right now, but I'm sure as we move along here, we're going to see the graphics card support coming into there. So I'm going to go ahead and do a render of this. So this is a scene that I rendered. So this basically this light that you're seeing right here, this is that cone. And I just put this big planet behind it just so you can see that, yes, you can see through it. Um, I did that with the volumetric rendering. And this uh, kind of a light that you see around this planet here is also this, done the same way. It's just really an emission light. And of course, there's nothing realistic about this image. I mean, why would you have this spotlight showing up on a, on a planet and that kind of a glow around the planet, but just to give you an idea of what this looks like. Now if we go back to the main screen here, as I said this is an emission node, but there's a couple of the other options that you can get if we do a shift A and look at our shaders. We also have a volume absorption and a volume scatter node. And you'll also notice that if I change this over to GPU, it'll get this little error or warning here saying that it's not supported with GPU yet. So it kind of reminds you that you can't use that. We'll have to change it over to the, the CPU. So some interesting things that you can do with this is affect how your light is absorbed in glass, things like that. So people are starting to use this, these features and we're seeing a lot of interesting effects coming out. Now, one thing to um, note is there are some limitations. Uh, currently, smoke and fire rendering is not supported. Uh, if you create a volume mesh, you cannot put the camera inside the mesh. It has to be on the outside of the mesh. And of course, the uh, GPU rendering, you have to use CPU. And also, you don't have the, quite the correct ray visibility for volume meshes. So that's under rendering. The next thing is motion tracker. Now within the motion tracker system, they've done some work where the trackers can now be weighted, which basically means that if part of what you're, what you're uh, tracking with your camera goes behind something else or goes off scene, you can actually put weights on it so that it'll help keep that tracking stable. Now I haven't done much myself with motion tracking, but I understand this is a, a much sought after feature. In the next topic, user interface. Uh, if we hit our T button here, you'll now notice some tabs showing up here. So this is very new. And if you hold down your control key and move your middle mouse wheel, you can actually move through those tabs that way as well. 
So we have some tabs there. If you come over to some of the settings that you see over here, uh, if you control click in any of these settings, it'll take you right into edit mode so you can edit them. Uh, one thing, nice thing that I recently noticed is if you go up to the outliner and you want to change the name of something, usually used to you would have to uh, control click in here and then you could edit. But now you just need to double click with your select key and you can go right in there and edit, which is kind of nice. So all within Blender you'll see some changes, like uh, your list can be edited, many changes to improve header menus, tooltips, buttons, and menus. Next, under the topic of modeling, there is a new modifier. It's called the Laplacian Deform Modifier. And what I'm going to do, instead of me trying to explain what this is, I'm going to put a link in the description that explains it in much better detail than I can. But basically, for people who like to animate things, this is going to be a very nice addition uh, to the modifiers. Another new modifier, the wireframe modifier, is something that I've also been uh, just, has been on my wish list for, uh, for Blender. And if I go to my wireframe scene here, basically I have this concept spaceship that I modeled uh, a couple of years ago. And what I did is just select it, go to the modifiers, do an add modifier, and your wireframe modifier is right here. So once you have it there, if you have any strange little jagged things sticking out when you first apply this modifier, then you can uncheck this even thickness. That tends to uh, help that. You can change the thickness of the wires here. And by default, this replace original is checked, so you only see the wireframe. So I've unchecked it just so I can see my model again. And you come up with something like this, and then if we render it out, then you get this view right here, which is, you know, as far as the, uh, the look of the wireframe, it looks fine to me. Um, of course, if you look at my actual topology, it doesn't look fine to me. It looks horrendous, but that's another reason to use the wireframe is to check your topology and make sure everything looks okay. But this is something that, you know, if anybody's seen my tutorial on how to do this before, uh, you basically had to go through a number of gyrations and different steps to get to this point. So this is a very, very welcome modifier. And we also have a change to the Boolean modifier. It now supports NGONs. And also they've done some improvements and enhancements to the bevel modifier. So if I move over to, I got another scene for that. So right now this is basically, I just created a uh, rectangular cube. And if I come over here, add modifier, and just add the bevel modifier like normal, then I have the bevel modifier on there, but we have some nice new features with the bevel modifier. So we have width, segments, and profile. So if I just change this, you can kind of see that it affects it quite a bit. You can change the number of segments. And you can actually, if you uh, do it enough, you can actually make it into this kind of shape here. So if we went ahead and applied this, then basically we have this shape here, almost like you've added a subsurface to it. So very cool, you can use this modifier to create some shapes very quick and easily where before you might have to do it uh, by messing around with a sphere or something to get something like this. And another thing as far as modeling, um, and this is not very widely known, but they have introduced a new tool, uh, a mesh cleanup tool. And basically it's, this is a new tool to remove loose verts, edges, and faces. So if you have say an object like this here, and you tab in edit mode, A select all, and you come down here to mesh, you will now see this cleanup menu, and you have a lot of different um, options here to help clean up your uh, mesh. Some other improvements that were done, the screw and triangulate modifiers were improved, and there's also an improvement to the knife tool. So that's modeling. Uh, another topic is threaded dependency graph. Now this is basically an uh, under the hood change, uh, something that you don't normally see, it's behind the scenes. And basically modifiers, your, the modifiers you use and constraints that you put on your uh, objects can be computed with multiple threads, meaning that it takes advantage of multi-core processors, which is nice. Because if you have a large scene using a lot of objects, you know, pretty, pretty heavy uh, using modifiers and things like that, 
it will uh, take advantage of those multi-core processors and speed up your workflow. Another topic, game development. Uh, the Blender game engine now supports a discrete level of detail for meshes. And for people who are into uh, developing games, they will understand that. I don't quite grasp it myself, but my limited uh, thought about it is I believe that in the gaming world, as you move through and look at the scene that you're looking at, uh, basically you have to be able to see the uh, changes in the resolution of the objects that as you're, as you're moving around. I may be way off case, you know, way off base, but I think that's, that's what it is. But anyway, this discrete level of details is the preferred method for uh, showing level of details for meshes. So what I've heard from some of the game developers so far is that they are very excited that this has been implemented. So that's a good thing. Also in game development, uh, they have support with working for Photoshop files. And also under game development, they have the view navigation walk mode, which is uh, updated from the old fly mode. So I'm just gonna change my scene over to this walk navigation. And this is kind of a, just a rocket complex that I modeled, uh, I don't know, a couple years ago. And if you do the shift F, then it kind of goes into this walkthrough navigation mode. And you can use the normal gaming ASD and W keys to uh, move through and move your mouse as you're going along. And you can hold down the shift key to go faster if you want to. And while you're doing that, this, if you're trying to figure out, you know, what does what, if you look at the very bottom of my screen, you'll see that it has a whole line going across the screen on, let's see if I can get full screen here, you know, shift F. Uh, it tells you exactly what all the keys do and um, how to move up and down, use gravity, um, increase, decrease speed, all that good stuff. And you can actually use this. Um, the reason, one of the reasons that's under game development is it's very useful for a gamer to test out like a first person shooter to use this to go through their, their map and see how it's looking. Um, another thing that you can use it for is to actually place your camera, which is nice. So that's a really just a very quick rundown of the new features in 2.7. Um, there's a lot of other little features that were added as well. Over 560 bug fixes that existed in the previous version. I didn't realize there was that many. Uh, I never really ran into them, but I'm glad I didn't. But I'm glad that they fixed them. Anyway, um, if you want to read into more detail on these new features on uh, 2.7. I'll put a description below so uh, you can click on that and read up more on the, the new features. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.